Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Shout out to Lottie Dottie and each and everybody. For those of you guys who have never been with me before, you have no idea who I am, where you found yourself. I am Candy Sincerity Johnson. My partner in life, my partner in business, Ms. Sean Johnson, is in the process of falling asleep. I wanted to give you guys a call late night. Um, I'm about to jump in the shower before I jump in the bed. I said, man, let me call the best friends late night and um, just check in, just see how everybody's doing, see if there's anybody who need anything, if I could serve you in any capacity. Hey, Miss Adrian, Miss Mandy. Hey, it's all of the best friends coming in. Um, for those of you guys who are new to me, you have no idea who I am or what I do. Um, I told you guys already I'm Candy Sincerity Johnson, but outside of that, I help you 5X your income within a 12-month period. I help you do that in one of two ways. Either we can take what you already have and look for opportunities within the money that you already have, helping you budget, helping you save, helping you um, just really learn how to invest and multiply what you have. Or you might say, you know what? I just don't have enough. I need more revenue, more income. I need another stream of income and Oops, I'm sorry. I picked that up. Um, I want to start a business and I want to generate more money. Then that's my playground, baby. I love to help people start and grow businesses. So um, that is who I am. That is what I do. Hey, Miss Medea, Miss Dot, Annie, Gloria. Hey, best friend. Shout out to each and every one of you guys. Um, hey, Miss Kathy. Hey, BFF. So um, I really don't have a topic. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on. I kept saying, oh, my God, I want to go live. I want to talk to the best friends about this or about that. And I was like, so much was going on and so much was going on with me. I was like, man, I didn't get a chance to, to mention it. So uh, let me know if y'all want to know what Sean is. And I, I'll, I'll. What? 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 Anybody wondering what Sean is? Have y'all seen Sean tonight? My best friend. Huh? What'd you say? I said hi, best friend. She said hi, best friend. Yes. Gloria said, wait a minute. How's daddy doing? Medea said, how's your daddy? Adrian said, how's your father? Okay, I can give y'all an update on dad. I can give y'all an update on dad. Shout out to the best friends. Listen. Listen. If y'all seen that reel that I posted of my dad, y'all see that picture from, I think it was, it was one of my favorite pictures of him and I, I think it was from 2009 when I was in Tennessee with him and I had on the Obama shirt. Y'all remember that, that reel? Shout out to the best friends. I had a couple of best friends that was like, is he single? I know he a little under the weather, but, but, but. You know, is 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 daddy single? I had a couple of people say that. Hey, best friend. Hey, Ariel. Hey, Miss uh, is it Kareem? So girl, a couple of people was like, Is he single? Uh the long and short is yes, technically he is, girl. Uh, but a couple of people, a couple of the best friends was like, Look, Adrian said, girl, he's handsome, LOL. Well, you know what, listen. I would like I would like to think that I look like him, so I would like to think if if, if I happen to have been a man, I might I might have had a fighting chance at finding me somebody. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but thank you very very much. I appreciate the compliment. A lot of people were saying that they that they found Daddy to be you know uh, uh, easy on the eyes. You know, for for a gentleman, easy on the eyes is what you know. A couple of the best friends were saying. So, thank you very very much for the compliment. So, you guys were asking about Dad. Look. Hey, Sean. Girl, do you have that camera on me? Uh-uh, they looking at me. You are so petty. And I huh? Take it Hi. Hey, Sean. Oh, uh, but yeah, so the best friends, uh, the best friends, they want to know about daddy. Okay, so here's, here's the, the update on dad. Yesterday after I called you guys, let me bring you up to speed. Yesterday after I called you guys, we spent some time together on live, remember? So we spent some time together on live and I told you that I was en route back there. I was going to get my dad's mom, which is my grandma, 
and we were going to go up to uh, or down, down rather, because it's southern Illinois. We were going to go down to the hospital to visit him. So we did just that. I got off of the live and I rushed over to to get her. She had packed a bag and her and I got in the car and we drove down to to see dad. And so during our time in the car, can I be transparent? Best friends, I found that it was more for me than for her Um, because my relationship with my dad has been kind of is it a strange is that is that the word Sean? Mm -hmm. Strain, strain, a strange, you know, what? however the people say it, girl. Because I hadn't had a real good relationship with him, naturally, I hadn't had a very, very strong, I had a, I have a connection with his family, his side of the family, but it's not as strong as I would like it to be and that I think it has potential to be in the future. So it was a good opportunity for me to spend quality time with my grandma. And so from the moment we got in the car together until we pulled up to the hospital and every moment, even after we arrived there, we were like two peas in a pot. Is it pot or pot? Girl, two peas in a pot, two peas in a pot, two peas, two, two, two peas sitting on mashed potatoes and gravy. Two peas in a pod. Spell it. P-O-D. Yep. We was that. <laughs> Two, two, two shit, two, two ham hocks in a pot, two, two shitlings in a bucket. Girl, we was that, okay? Girl, Adrian said, pot, fool, pot. We was that, girl. We were that. And so I, what I did was I used it as an opportunity to really just ask questions. We had a conversation and I learned about her. I learned about him. I learned about my aunts and uncles, how they grew up. I just, we just talked, we just talked and we just connected. And so I found that I think we needed that time. Can I be honest? I think we needed that time. And so when we arrived at the hospital, we got there. This hospital was huge, girl. We got there and we walked in. And from the moment we hit the door, we were, we were tag teaming dad. So I told grandma when we got, when we got there, I said, I, when we get here, I'm going to look for the nurse. I'm going to put the call light on because I want them to give you the full report as to everything that has happened over the past couple of days. You've been in, in, in Arizona. You know, we want to make sure all of the information that I got when I was here, all of the information that may have came, even when, you know, I wasn't here. Maybe if the dad, if the doctor came and dad was sick and in a lot of pain, he couldn't remember whatever. We finna go through this chart from top to bottom, okay? So, girl, as soon as we hit that, as soon as we hit that door, I put the call light on. She started straightening up the room. We pull it. We 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 redoing sheets, fluffing up pillows. We would we were getting him together, okay? So the nurse comes in, gives a full report, and I think it confirmed what a lot of what I had already told her. So. It's very much so looking like they're almost saying with absolute certainty um, outside of doing one little last like biopsy. They're pretty much saying dad has liver cancer. Um, they're not able to tell without the biopsy how progressive it is. And so it was one of those situations where, um, you know, I just I just seen her just immediately start trusting God we looked at him and, and, you know, my dad, he's spoiled. You could see, you could tell, you could tell he's a mama's boy. Daddy is spoiled. And, and so, uh, I was messing with him. I said, why you keep coming out your gown? And he was like, cause it was pulling on my neck. It's pulling on my neck. And I said, well, dad. So then grandma said, um, she said, well, do you know, do you want us to run to Walmart, get you some pajama bottoms and stuff? Would you be more comfortable with that? So we ran to Walmart, got him some pajama bottoms, some socks and stuff, and just got him set up. So we came back. I, you know, I wanted to make sure she had a little something to eat. So we ran by Wendy's and got a little taste of something. And I just, we just had an opportunity to just talk and just love on him. And so um, I just, I think this is the start of something beautiful, best friends. And I just am excited about where it's going. I'm not excited about what's going on with my dad as it relates to his health, but I'm excited about getting to know a part of me that I didn't know. 
And so, so much has happened. Um, you know, we don't know where this journey is going as it relates to his health. We don't know, you know, what stage of cancer it, it, it potentially is. We don't know what the treatment plan is going to look like. You know, it's very, a, a lot of things are kind of up in the air because you got to remember my dad lives in Tennessee. He was just passing through. So we're not even, you know, we're not even doing business with the hospital that's close by where we live, where we can just go across town and be there in 10 minutes. It's three hours away. But let me tell you about a mother's love. She had just got off of the flight the night before. When dad was in surgery and I was there by his side, she was in flight trying to get back here. And she immediately went home, got herself some more clothes in a bag, went down there, and she's been by his side every minute since. I'm telling y'all, that, that love, I'm talking about a mother's love. So, you know, she's been right there. I talked to her earlier. I said, you know, how's dad doing? I said, grandma, have you ate? She said, yeah, I went down to the cafeteria and got me a little something. I'm like, I want you to take care of yourself. So, you know, I just, I don't know. It's it's just, it's, it's very interesting. But she looks so good. She's so young. We were running. <laughs> It's so funny, best friends. Look, so when we when we came back from the from Walmart, we parked the truck in the parking garage, and it was drizzling. Then it started to rain. My grandma has a very long, beautiful hair. Her hair is to like here. So she, I'm thinking she running because she trying not to get that hair wet, girl. Her hair was sharp. She was like, no, nah, I don't mind getting my hair wet. She said, but you know how when you in the rain, your glasses, you know, I don't want my glasses messed up. But she is so she is so gorgeous. I can't wait for y'all to meet her. I'm going to see if she'll go live with me one day. Um, but she is so gorgeous and she is so loving. So when we um, when we got back to the room and the nurses came in, they kept referring to her as his wife. And, and she was like, correction, mother. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. But I was like, that is too cute. It's too cute. But yeah, so um, there are a lot of things as it relates to, you know, what happens next with dad. There's a lot of things that's up in the air because they really wanted to do the they wanted the results of the biopsy. But, you know, I don't think he is. Um, he's probably he's probably a little a little weak to to be able to withstand that. That's a bit much um, right now. So I don't know, you know, what they're going to do Um you know, w without that, because they were wanting that to say, OK, what stage, you know, are we in? And so, um, you know, without that, you know, they were talking about possibly doing, you know, more scans and stuff. But we don't you know, we don't know. We don't know. So, you know, they're they're thinking that he'll probably be in the hospital for a couple of more days. But then once he's back home, you know, figuring out, you know, what do next steps look like? But. You know, it's one of those situations where um, I'm grateful because, you know, he trusts me. My grandma trusts me. And so, you know, just being able to show up and just just be there um, is, is, is very is, it's been a blessing for me. It's been a blessing for me. And so, you know, all we can do is just take it day by day, honestly, because once they say that he's discharged then we got to figure out what does that look like? How are we going to get him back home? And, you know, will he need, you know, care? And, you know, it's it's a lot of moving parts. So you just never know. And so we just kind of just taking it day by day and just trusting the process. Thank you very much, best friend, for the stars. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for the stars. Yeah. So um, thank you very, very much for the stars. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much where where we've been. I know my content has been much different than what you guys are used to. You guys are used to me talking about business. We're talking about money and we're talking about all of the things. But um, life happens to entrepreneurs, too. And this is a prime example. You want to create something where when life happens, you're still able to do what you need to do and generate streams of revenue as well. And so I think that was the, the teaching moment yesterday that I did on yesterday's video. Um, Vanessa said, I got some good news, best friend. What's your good news? What's your good news? Um, but yeah, so that, that's the, that's the status with dad. But I really, for me, 
Um, I, I really, really, really look forward to spending more time with my grandma. I really do. I look forward to spending more time with dad too. But I look, I really, if I could be honest, best friends, I really look forward to spending more time with her because talking to her yesterday in a lot of ways helped me understand him, if that makes sense. Um, in addition to that, just uh, having an opportunity to kind of be a leader, one of the leaders amongst, you know, the, the six of us, the six kids. Um, you know, when, when the doctors came in this morning and I, I was on a conference call with my grandma and the, and the doctors, you know, just having to, to deliver, you know, certain news and certain specific details and stuff back to my brothers, that was tough. So, I, you know, I sent um, a group text message and I, I had to apologize to them. You know, that's certainly not the kind of news you don't want details or updates about your parents health via text. But, you know, when it's six people, you know, and I've and I've been on the road for two days. I'm like, I got to work and you know, I got I can't stop everything and make six phone calls and process emotions with six people and, you know, go through that. So in my mind, I'm like, how do I get all of these details out? to everybody in as timely of a manner as possible. So I put it all together in a group text and it took them a long time to respond. So I started to get worried and I reached out and I said, is everybody okay? And they were like, yeah, you know, we're processing it. So for me, um, I'm learning that men typically process sickness different than women. Um, and so, you know, these, these Kings are, they haven't, they having their own journey as it relates to this. And so, um, you know, that's kind of another thing that, that, you know, we, that we're working through. So, um, Melissa says, sometimes we just need to take a break away from business to focus on family that needs us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. It's a balance, right? It's a balance because the reality is in, in, as, as an entrepreneur, You've heard me say it before. You guys have heard me say it before. As an entrepreneur and as a business owner, you eat what you kill. So if you're not working, in some instances, you're not eating, right? You create multiple streams of revenue so that if one is slowing down or on pause because you're not working, then you have other things. And then, of course, you have savings, investments, et cetera. But it's one of those situations where, you know, as business owners, when you slow down, unless you have a big, huge business, then, you know, there there's a natural, you know, you, you feel it, you feel it. So it's one of those situations where you have to balance it. You have to balance it because entrepreneurs, we don't get sick time. We don't get vacation time. We don't get, you know, paid time off or, or you know, all of those things. So you have to have balance. You have to have balance. So you can't solve one. You can't put out one fire by starting another one. That makes sense. Tracy said, my dad had liver cancer and I had a hard time processing it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very much so, you know, it, it, it's very much so, um, you know, a thing, a thing. So, um, we are working through it as a family as best we can. You know, like I told you guys, I'm just, you know, my, my role is to try to make sure my dad is as comfortable and, you know, um, good as possible. And then also, to um to also be a support system and be there for my grandma as much as possible. Uh Deborah said, Are you back at home, Candy? Yes, I am. I'm back at home. I'm back at home. I am back at home. Thank you for asking. Um I see a lot of congratulations. Congratulations, graduate. I think it I think that's that's the details. Um but yeah, yeah. So how's everybody else? Does anybody have any questions? Is there anything that I could do to help you guys, to serve you. Um, I appreciate you guys really just being with me on this journey. Um, I know when you made the decision to follow me, whenever that was, you know, we didn't see this happening, but I appreciate you guys being here and being a support every step of the way. And I want to be that for you too. I want to be here as answering questions. I want to be, you know, helping you on whatever journey you have as well. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, Miss Deborah. And I appreciate everybody who's been keeping us in, in their thoughts and prayers as well. Yep. So, yeah, so we uh, we have a lot of things that we have to figure out. So 
tomorrow, um, I actually have to, uh, I got to go to Chicago tomorrow. So I'll be in Chicago working with some of our vendors there. In addition to that, um, I will probably go back to visit dad on either Saturday or Sunday. Mm hmm. Yeah, I certainly will. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, did I miss any comments? I'm going back through. Uh, Kathy said, as a caretaker, make sure you take care of yourself. I've been there. Yeah. You know, I was telling, um, I was telling my, was I telling my, I was telling my mom. I think I was telling my mom. I said, I got to do a better job of eating better. So although I've been doing a lot of fast food, a lot of eating out, I got to stay away from this greasy food and, and, and all of that. I got to make sure I'm choosing options that's going to be better, um, you know, because even, you know, choosing Jimmy John's or Subway or something like that over, you know, McDonald's or, you know, pizza or something. Uh, Cassandra said, where does your dad live? So my dad lives in Tennessee. He's right outside of Nashville. Um, he's right outside of Nashville and we live in Illinois. So we live probably 45 minutes south of Chicago. So he had left from being with myself and my brother and our kids and stuff for the weekend. He was on his way back to Tennessee. He stopped to see one of his cousins, um, you know, in central or southern Illinois, about three hours from here. And he got sick and he's in the hospital three hours south of here. But, you know, I think maybe four or five hours from Tennessee, the area of Tennessee that he's in. So that's the uh, that's the um, the hard part about, you know, this whole ordeal. That's the hard part about this ordeal. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's really that's really it. You know, because when you start looking at um, trying to figure out next steps. You know, of course, that hospital would love to put together like an action plan. Like, hey, you know, if you do that, you guys should work on doing this, this and this. But it don't make sense to go down a rabbit hole of an action plan if that's not where the person lives. So then you got to coordinate with another hospital, another set of doctors, and it can be a lot. Uh, Cassandra said, I used to live in Chicago. Very, very nice. Yeah. Gloria, I will make sure I take care of myself. Thank you very, very much. And Sean as well. I've been on Sean about taking care of herself. I feel like if I could be honest, best friends, Sean and I have talked every day, but it's been very, um, it's been very sporadic. It's been, you know, normally on a normal day, we would talk multiple times a day. We would have had conversations. We would have, you know, but the past, like, you know, several days, it's been very transactional. It's been very much so like, okay, the kids got practice. I got this one. You got that one. It's been very much so like, let's just win the day because it's been so much going on. So, um, yeah, I've just, yeah, I've just, I've, I've realized for me that this journey with my dad, sometimes me sharing certain aspects or doing videos with you guys has helped me. Because, you know, it allows my family to be able to see, you know, into my thoughts and what I'm thinking and how I'm processing everything. And it also allows me to, you know, still check in with you guys. And it makes me feel better if I could be transparent. But in the process of doing all of that, I still have to be mindful of the fact that, you know, there are other people involved and not just me. You know, how will my dad feel about me sharing all of this? I don't know. I don't think he would care, but... You know, maybe what if he did? So, you know, it, it's got to be a balance. So I'm one of those people where I'm always trying to think of of everybody. So, but this is an easy way for me to kind of share um, something with, you know, multiple people versus returning a lot of text messages and a lot of calls and having the same conversation over and over again. I could always say, hey, I did a video, you know, go check out the video. And I kind of answer some of that. So um, it allows me to kind of be able to, Stay focused on, you know, fulfilling my obligations to my household and my businesses and my partner and stuff like that and the kids and also be free to be there for for him and for my dad's family during this time. So um, putting putting some aspects of it here has been helpful for me in that regard, if that makes sense. 
Um, Velma said, I will continue to pray for your dad. I lost my dad two years ago. And the pain is still fresh. Treasure every moment. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Um, that's huge. Yeah. Deborah, yeah, that's 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 hard. That's hard, Deborah. That's very, very hard. Tell them stick with it and, and keep trying to fight that thing. Baby, that monk, that drinking monk on your back, baby. You know, tell him all he can do is just keep keep fighting. Keep Keep fighting like you do for your next breath when you can't breathe. Keep fighting. Um, very much so. But yes, yes, yes. Anybody have any questions about anything? Any questions about anything? Thank you for all the positive energy, the thoughts, the prayers, etc. Any questions about anything? Anything, anything. So yeah, yeah. But I am super, super, super grateful. Like I told you guys that um that I was able to just be there be there for for my mom I mean for my grandma and everything what is this comment that y'all keep talking about what is the comment what is the comment um I missed the I missed the comment I know a couple people was like did you did you see the comment is it on topic or what we saying what's I don't I don't understand I missed the comment I missed the comment guys yeah I missed the comment. Adrian, you said you have a question. What's your question? You said you have a question. I want to answer your question. What's the question? Mm-hmm. Yep. I want to answer your question. Thank you, Miss Lisa. You said my thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Um. Oh, Michelle said, I feel like I missed something. Did you just meet your father? No. Okay, so Michelle, I didn't just meet my dad. I've known my dad my whole life, but my dad, um, my dad just hasn't really been as as present, if that makes sense. Um he hasn't been as present. So um, you know, I'm almost 40. I probably say in true transparency. Um, the times that I can remember, of course, you know, it may have been more if I was a baby, but if I added all the times up that I saw my dad, um, I probably would say that I remember about 10 to 12 of those times, like, like 10 to 12 times. So we haven't seen each other a lot. We haven't been around each other a lot, you know, anything like that. So we were working on cultivating a relationship in the midst of us working on cultivating a relationship. He wanted to meet. Um, the kids, my twins, my nine-year-old twins, because he hadn't, he had never met them. So my dad um, came recently, actually this past weekend. He came to Illinois to visit for the weekend, and he um, wanted to see my see the twins. And then my brother, I have a brother. We have the same birthday. His name is Eric. Eric's daughter, Eric and his daughter live in Michigan. Eric's daughter had a basketball tournament here in Illinois this past weekend. So it was an opportunity for me to see my brother that I hadn't seen since I was like eight or nine. It was an opportunity for him to see dad. He hadn't seen dad since he was like eight or nine. And <clears throat> excuse me, it was an opportunity for all of the kids to meet their first cousins. You know what I'm saying? So it was a big weekend, and then in the midst of us having a good time this weekend, dad was on his way back home, and then that's when he got sick. So, no, it's not me meeting my dad for the first time. I've known him. I've known him my whole life. <coughs> Excuse me. We just haven't had, you know, he just he just hasn't been as present as, you know, I would have I would have hoped. But, you know, it's water under the bridge. So, you know, really, we've been documenting the process. The whole forgiveness, the whole, you know, wanting to to get back into our lives and and just really just cultivate a relationship. But as the story continues, it's feeling like my dad knew that he was sick before coming to Illinois to see us because he was so determined to get here to see us. He was very much so determined. He wanted to see me. He wanted to see the twins. He wanted to see my brother. He wanted to see his daughter. He wanted to see his mom. He again, well, he he see his mom all the time. But he, you see what I'm saying? He just wanted to see everybody. He just wanted to. He just he just wanted to see everybody. 
And it just seemed like he was just determined to get here. He was so after talking to my grandma and after just putting all parts of the story together, he just was dead set on getting here. And, um, you know, he just literally just moved mountains to get here. He got here and it just, I don't know. I don't know. So we took pictures and, you know, y'all know I document the process of everything. I posted them here. So when you scroll down, you see everything from Saturday, you know, Sunday, et cetera. So, yeah, um, it's just that I totally understand. I love your spirit and transparency. Uh, you will be a blessing to so many because of it. Please keep helping people. Blessings to you. Thank you very, very much for your kind words. Thank you very, very much for your kind words. Um, uh, Miss Betty said, I have a question. I'll be 69 tomorrow and my only source of income is Social Security. Would you advise me to get a con consolidation loan to pay off my credit cards? Um, So debt to pay off debt. I'm not sure about that. And it will be hard for me to give advice on that because I don't know all parts of the story. Is the interest on the loan less than the interest on the credit cards? Um, You know, do you have the income to pay back a loan? I don't know. There's a lot of things that you have to consider. I would suggest, especially while it's 50% off, my entire website is 50% off right now. I would suggest, best friend, that you get the no debt reset because not only right now because it's 50% off, but because it walks you through all of the stages on how to work from being in debt to getting out of debt to budgeting, saving, you know, et cetera. And so what you'll be able to do is as you go through the no debt reset program, you'll be able to go through and analyze different aspects of your finances that I don't, I'm not privy to here just on the live. So instead of me just giving you a whimsical answer and just saying, yeah, you should do it. It's a good idea. Or no, you shouldn't. It's a horrible idea. There's so many moving parts that I would literally have to um, look at your individual circumstance to really be able to assess, to see. And um, yeah, the no debt reset is going to probably be the best, the best source of help for you. Um, yeah. So, Miss Vanessa, congratulations on on the degree, the degree. Miss um, Cynthia, thank you very, very much for the stars. Thank you so much, best friend, for the stars. Thank you so much, best friend, for the stars. So let me this is a teaching moment, too. Let me tell you guys this. I used to watch some people's live. And I used to think it was weird when people would type stuff in the comments and the person live wouldn't address certain things in the comments. And so I used to be like, man, I know they see my comment or I know they see the other person's comment. Or I know they see different things. Oftentimes when people are doing a live stream, there's a lot of moving parts that they have to consider. And I'm sharing this with you guys just because if it happens here um, or in the future, um, you guys will kind of understand exactly what's going on and what my thought process is. So oftentimes I take these videos and I download them and then I put them on my YouTube channel. Or I put them on other platforms. OK, when I do that, they're not able to see all of the comments and all of the conversations that we had. So if I'm in the middle of a thought, if I'm in the middle of a story, if I'm in the middle of a sentence, it's very strange to just go off the beaten path and start transitioning topics. Does that make sense? Sometimes I'll see comments and I may seemingly, and I'm not doing it, I may seemingly ignore the comment and then want to come back to it after the live is over and comment in the comments. Or sometimes I just genuinely don't see stuff because when you're live streaming, you guys see all the comments, but the person who's live live streaming, we don't always see all the comments. Sometimes the comments are filtered for us. So it could be a it could be a, a host of things. But I want you guys to always understand um, several things. Number one, if I'm in the middle of a story or if I'm explaining something, I don't want to lose my thought. I don't want to forget what I was going to say. And I want to make sure the conversation flows so it makes sense on other platforms. Two, I may not have seen the comments, especially if there were a bunch of other comments after that. And three, I would never intentionally ignore anybody. 
Does that make sense? There's sometimes I make decisions if it's outside of what I've outlined for that particular live stream that I'll go back and I'll I'll acknowledge it in the comments. So yeah, so that's that's that. That's that. Um Marquita said, how many hours will the one-on-one -on -one coaching be? Will it be multiple sessions? Very good questions. So no. So the uh, the coaching session is one hour. I have had people who say, hey, I'm in the midst of starting a business. I bought the, you know, I, I, I got access to the Mob Accelerator. I went through that. Um, but I do have a couple of things that I want to work through. And so I, I think, you know, I need a couple of coaching sessions. So um, what what happens is sometimes um, people will book two, three, four, five coaching sessions at a time. Sometimes people will book one, um, but I allow you to do whatever it is according to what you need based on where you are, where you are with your money, where you are with your business and what you really think you need help with. Oftentimes I tell people the best strategy is to book one session I would say don't book a bunch of sessions at one time. Book one session. We'll work through what the issue is, and then I'll be able to put an action plan together. Once I can assess exactly where we are and where the goal is, I can say, hey, you know, we can probably work together and get that accomplished in X amount of sessions if you do everything that I, you know, recommend or suggest, you know, in the interim. So I would say definitely start with one session. But one session is the 60 minute option that's on the website. And right now that um that option is is 50% off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I know I'm speaking to the choir for people who are used to personal development. You know, there's some coaches that, you know, you pay thousands of dollars for 60 minutes of their time. And there's some people who look and they're like, oh, my God, you, you what do you charge for for an hour? You have to know and understand when you're dealing with a coach, you're dealing with a business coach. What that hour of time is, is time that they can never get back. So it has to make sense for that person to say, I'm going to put my business on pause to help, you know, and I hope there's nobody in the comments that Amber, because I'm not picking on you to help Amber, to help Joe, to help Mike, to help Philip start their business. I'm putting my business and everything that I'm working on on hold to come over here to start somebody else, you know, to help them start their business. It's got to make sense. Right. It has to make sense. And so, you know, somebody's coaching premium or, or, or fee or whatever would have to make sense for that person to be able to do that. Okay. Um, Miss Craig said, Blessings, Candy. How's that? He's still in my thoughts and prayers. Thank you very, very much for your kind words. We just talked about that. Dad. dad is still in the hospital. Um, if you go back and watch the replay, um, you'll see I, I gave a full update on dad. He's still in the hospital. Um, my my hope is to be able to get there to him on either Saturday or Sunday. So I definitely will be back in route there to see him again in a couple of days. Y'all know my my uh timelines are are kind of, you know, messed up because girl, I spent all day yesterday thinking it was Tuesday, yesterday was Wednesday and today is Thursday. So I'm telling you when life happens you, and you lose days, um then you then it's hard to it's hard to play catch up. Velma said your dad is present in your life now. And that's most important. Maybe your dad knew something and wanted to see his family at this point in time. I'm glad he made this happen. Exactly. Exactly. And if I could be honest with you, I'm humble. I'm hum I am so humble by him making us a priority and wanting to be here and wanting to spend this time with us. I just kept I just kept hugging and kissing on him. And while, while I was up there and just loving on him. And every time I looked at him, I was like, I have your whole face. I have your whole, I have your whole face. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many, there's just so many things about him that it, these genes are so strong. Even without really being around him a lot, I'm a lot like him. I'm so much like him. And, um... You know, y'all heard me say in the other video, he's just a good dude. He's a good dude. 
And my father and, and, and my grandma confirmed it. You know, my father, he, um, he was introduced to something at a very early age when he was a teenager and he wanted to make something of himself and he wanted to have a better life for himself. So he, like many other young men, enrolled in the military. And when he enrolled in the military, all he knew was he wanted a better life for himself. And all he knew was, you know, he really just wanted to do the right thing. So he enlisted in the military and he was in the army for for some years and he was stationed in Germany and some things happened to him in Germany. And a series of events happened to him in Germany. And so in other countries, best friends, sometimes getting access to things to numb your pain, if you understand what I'm saying, is just as easy as it would be for us in the U.S. to get a bottle of water or a drink of water. And so he came home just, you know, really fighting some internal battles that he didn't leave dealing with. And so he spent the rest of his life just trying to fight through who he knew he wanted to be and who he knew he could be with who he was. He'd been, he'd been having a battle. He'd been having a struggle. He'd been having an internal battle for a mighty long time. And so I think in a lot of ways, I'm learning that, you know, the alcohol, everything, it, it, it's a numbing mechanism. It's a coping mechanism for him. And then now that he's sick, it makes him probably want to want to run to it even more. But the more grace I give him, the more grace God has given me. Let me say that again. The more grace over the past month or two that I've been giving my dad, the more grace God has been giving me. My businesses are, are super successful and probably doing better than they have in over a year. Kennedy and Caleb are happy. Um, he is what Caleb needed and Caleb is what he needed. You know, my dad didn't get a chance as much as he wanted to be probably or as much as he wished he could have been to be present in his kids' lives. But my dad has a chance to be present in his grandchildren's lives. And so Caleb don't have a father. My grandfather died when Caleb and Kennedy were six months old. When I carried the twins, I knew I was a lesbian woman and they wouldn't have a father figure at home. So my grandfather, in my mind, was going to be that. Him and my grandmother had been married for almost 60 years. He was a father figure for me. He worked hard. He was a provider. He had a lot of the qualities that I would want my son to grow up and emulate. But he left us when he left us when Caleb and Kennedy were six months. He passed away. And so. Ever since then, there's been a hole. There's been a gap. And so my dad coming back into our lives. Hey, it made me realize maybe there was a void for me. And so every day since this weekend, during the short time that he and Caleb spent together, Caleb has asked about him multiple times a day. They, they affectionately now call him G-Dad for granddad. You know, my grandfather is Papa to them. So they call Daddy G-Dad. And so multiple times a day, Kayla want to know, Kennedy want to know, how's G-Dad? How's G-Dad? What's going on with G-Dad? What are the nurses and doctors saying about G-Dad? Can we talk to him? And because Dad has been in such excruciating pain, he's really not in a condition to really talk much. And because, you know, the hospital is so far, you know, it's three hours one way. That would be a six hour trip, not even including the time that we spend. Um, so I may, I may put the kids in the car to get them there to see him. But the hard part about it is Kennedy has severe car sickness. So even with medicine, 
it's a very, very, very tough journey for her to go down there and be in a car, but it's not far enough to get on a plane. So it's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of moving parts. But I struggle with what parts of this I will show you guys and give you access to. Because again, my goal is not to take the attention away from where the attention has to go. The attention should be on my father, his healing, his recovery, you know, his journey, whatever that looks like. My grandma, his his siblings, etc. My brothers. So I'm not making this about me at all. And I hope if anybody connected to me, my family or otherwise, if they feel a way about me live streaming about this, that they forgive me. But I've always lived my life on social media, transparent, and I've built two very successful businesses doing that. People connect with people that they know, like, and trust. And I just show up and be me. And the people that know, like, and trust me, they show up. The people who don't like me, they see the notifications and they just don't even answer. Right. But we've created a community here and this community sustains everything for me. And I sustain a lot for you. And so this community is everything. So when I'm not able to show up for my community, I, I got to I gotta tell you why, right? I can't just disappear for days because then without you knowing anything, you would think in your mind, oh my God, she's starting to be inconsistent. What kind of business is she running? She only call us when, you know, she's announcing a sale or something is going on. That's not it. That's never been it. I show up every day. I show up multiple times a day. I post all kinds of stuff. Something happened. I'm giving y'all commentary, you know, et cetera. And I'm constantly teaching. So if I'm ever in a position where I can't do that, girl, y'all know best friends when it's me, you know, when I was sick, girl, I told you when I had my hysterectomy, I documented it. You see what I'm saying? That's what we've built here. But I have to remember everybody that signed up for social media. So it's got to be balance. It's got to be balance. And so I ask you guys to give me grace as I try to give balance. I ask my family to give me grace as I try to be balanced because this is un this is uncharted territories. You know, my goal is not to make anybody look bad or feel bad or, you know, to get up here and tell one side of the story, etc. You know, um which is why my goal, my prayer is one day dad is feeling much better and we can go live and he can talk. You know, he love to talk. I don't know if he would do social media, but, you know, you just never know. You just never know. But I can't count the best friends who have said that I said something or did something that blessed them and made them lean towards forgiveness lean towards becoming a better version of themselves, wanting to make the decision to stop smoking cigarettes, stop drinking, you know, stop doing whatever activities have been unhealthy for them so that they can prioritize their health because they now see what the effects of those things have on their children. So this thing is bigger than us. And I'm, and when I say that I'm not talking to you guys, best friends, I'm talking to my family members that may see this. This is bigger than us. This is bigger than us. This is, this is, this is, this is a God thing. This ain't a candy thing. This ain't a Eric thing. This, this ain't, this is a God thing, you know? And so as God is shining a mirror and a light in my face, and he's doing the same thing for my father, and he's doing the same thing for my siblings, he's also doing it for a lot of you guys. And the same way how I wanted y'all to watch and observe and learn from the Carmen and Karina thing is how you guys are sitting and you watching this. See, when stuff happens in front of you guys, best friends, there's always a lesson to be learned. There's always a lesson to be learned. When you watching somebody else go through the storm, the lesson is not just, oh, God, you know, keep them safe, protect them, cover them. And whoo, thank God it ain't me. You see what I'm saying? That's not the lesson. 
sometimes there's something inside of what you're watching. There's a lesson for you to extract. Now, only you know what that lesson is. Only you know what that lesson is. And if you don't know what that lesson is, then that's when you go to your creator and you ask your creator. Or if you're not a person of faith, you meditate and you go within yourself to try to figure out what the lesson is. That's when the prayer becomes more about clarity. Going into 2023, I told y'all we're going to accomplish our goals by having clarity, consistency. I said it, remember? At the end of December, I said, God gave me clarity and consistency. Those are the two words that were screaming. It was ringing louder than anything in my ears. Clarity and consistency. We got to be clear. We got to be, we got to be consistent. I can't show up on Monday, but then come, don't come back on Tuesday and on Wednesday. I'm, you see what I'm saying? I, I look forward to this because just as much as I pour into you, you pour into me. And this is a reciprocal relationship. And that's just what this community has been built on. This community has been built on that. You know, if I could be honest with y'all, I was sitting um, in the recliner in my dad's room and the camera would have literally just been on me just like it is now. And I thought about going live, but I'm like, my dad is in pain. He needs some relief. I want to be quiet. I want to serve him. You see what I'm saying? I want to make sure he's okay in this season. And so... I just I poured in I poured into him. I just wanted I just wanted to be present. I just poured poured you know, so I didn't go live, but yeah. So this season is about clarity and consistency, and then I'm trying to figure out balance. I'm trying to figure out balance. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. So you know because, you know. It's it's sensitive, right? I mean, so you know, it's still somebody's medical ish, you know, somebody's medical history, somebody's medical, you know, stuff. So, so yeah, you know, so you you have to, you understand, best friends. Like, I gotta, I gotta find balance. I gotta find balance. But yeah, they think, they strongly, they strongly suspect that it's cancer. We just don't know how progressive. We don't know. We don't know where we are on the spectrum. We don't know where we are. But I trust God. I trust God. I trust God. And, you know, my dad was his his child being God and my grandma's child before he was my father. So that's why I keep mentioning her and I keep mentioning, you know, that. So however I feel, you know, I work through it. I worked out to work through it. I don't know what working through it looks like. I'll work through it. I'll talk through it, you know, and I'll, I'll if you know, if necessary, you know, I'll book a book a session, girl, because everybody need a good coach, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, I know my brothers are having a very hard time. That's hard for me to know that, you know, the uh the wise men are having a hard time. Yeah. So, yeah, Marquita said I can totally agree because my plate is spilling over, but God, but God keeps keep the faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Monica said uh, I lost my sister to liver cancer a year, a year ago. How long did she suffer with it? Wow. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. So. Yes, best friends. Well, um, that is it. That is all. I won't keep you guys. I literally, I didn't have an agenda. I wanted to check in. There have been so many trending topics, stuff that I know I wanted to just dissect with you guys. I'm going to literally have to look at some, some of the trending topics and, um, you know, I'm going to have to look at uh, some of the trending topics and, and really just you know, figure out what's what, what's going on and, and all of that. Um, and we will 
we will talk greasy again soon. But for now, um, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your night. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Make sure your notifications are on. Stay close to the page because I, as I always say, the absolute best is yet to come. But baby, we still got work to do. Love you.